There are three three main principles of the of the safeguards or the what if group um, that we decided were really important. Firstly, is um, that people's anxieties, people's worries, people's concerns should be open. Uh, there shouldn't be any barrier to people being able to articulate whatever it is that's concerning them in terms of Adam moving out of home. Because uh, if you hold it in, then it's going to be a much longer process for actually for Adam to, to, to move out because that energy will stay in the group and prevent things from, from moving forward. So um, make a structure so that everybody can just get everything out that they need to say. Um, the second principle is, um, I guess, about uh, planning and um, planning and prevention. Probably that relates to the first. So, if you can um, change your um, change your thinking from these are all things that could go wrong to um, we're going to get out all of these things that could go wrong so that we can prevent and plan ahead. Um, that's probably the second really important principle. And the third really important principle is um, I guess what something we we talked about is um, delegating called it delegating down so um, the more that you can invest um, uh, people who are in daily um, support and relationship with Adam his housemates his support staff with the ability to uh, make make decisions to resolve problems as close as possible to them and to them and Adam, um, it, the better it's going to be. The more you have a hierarchy that requires people to ring kind of an ascending order of people, uh, the more pressure that puts on um, Adam's parents and to be available, uh, etc. And also, actually, paradoxically, the least. Um, safeguarded Adam is going to be because you want people just to feel in the moment um, around probably a great deal of things. I've got the knowledge. I've got the. I've been invested with the responsibility. I can do this. I can. I can resolve this issue right here and now. Um, so those are the three main principles. We just came together as uh, friends and family, uh, part of the support circle, and gathered to really brainstorm what could happen so that we could prepare any um, housemates with potentials. And what that looked like was we actually just put on a big sheet of paper all the concepts that could occur. So they made it being related to um, health issues such as what if Adam um, took the wrong medication, uh, could be practical things like what if um, a support worker didn't show up that day, um, what if Adam and a support worker had a car accident during the day, um, you know, they were all unfortunately things that were potentially what could go wrong, We um, so therefore people were prepared and we formed such, um, like out of that the idea was to form a book, we don't still know what that book is going to be called, uh, but it, I looked at it like an almanac of um, that someone could peruse and read and just be forewarned, forearmed with measures of what to do. And so we brainstormed it and popped it all out on one sheet of paper. We physically cut them up into all little pieces of paper and then grouped them back into um, what I put together as like health-related issues, safety-related issues, um, continuity of support, uh, housemates, the issues relating to housemates, um, and then uh, even some financial issues because it's a household where people, you know there's a budget and food has to be purchased and and uh, electricity paid and all those sort of things. And then by grouping it, uh, we were able to start forming the basis of what would be a book. Examples were like to create a tree of support so that if something happened, you could glance at that tree and know who was the right person to contact. So it didn't necessarily just go back to Karen and Ivan. Um, the purpose of Adam living an independent life with his flatmates is that there was, um, you know, uh, that responsibility was able to shared by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So if a support worker didn't show up, then um, who would be the next person on that tree that would need to know? So the tree was there as a give you an idea of a course of action to take prior to just escalating it. 
The Safeguard Group has been going at least a year now because it's taken us that long to meet every six to eight weeks to put down all these ideas and formulate it into a book. Um, the, the members of that group were just a handful of people from the support circle meetings who felt that they um, perhaps had the practical application of being day to day with Adam mm. the most. Mm. So um, yeah, mostly family members and um, we have had some support workers you know, be part of that meeting as well to mm. give input. Mm.